Okay, so far for our intermezzo. I promised you that this thing we were going to solve a bit more easily, or I was going to show you a shortcut to solve this thing rather than the repeated unfolding and the proof by induction and all of this stuff. So for that, we're going to take a look at the master method, or the master theorem. Both names are used. And this master method or theorem is something that's not in our book. Uh, it is part of many other books, and Wikipedia has a great article about it as well. Uh, but for this course, you either have to be satisfied with Wikipedia or my slides or a combination of the two. But the book, unfortunately, is not going to help you out. So, the master method, how does that work? Well, for the master method, or we can apply it, rather, on things that look like this. So we have this recursive formula, and our base case is a constant amount of work, and our recursive case is a number of recursive calls that all make the input at most half of the size, and some amount of work to combine them. So if we take a look at what we had over here, our base case is indeed some constant amount of work. We have two recursive calls, each of which is half the work, and we have some work in combining the solutions. So this has the right shape for us to apply the master theorem later on. Notice that it only works on things that look like this. So for instance, the min-max that we saw last week, where every time the list became just one smaller, so we had a recursive call with n minus 1, too bad, we can't use this. We'll have to do the repeated unfolding and the proof by induction. So why can we use it on things like this? Well, because for things like this, our calls form a nice tree. Our first call results in A calls of N over B size. And they will all result in A calls of N over B squared. We can repeat this. And my tree keeps shifting a little bit. There we go. Until all the way at the end, we have a huge number of calls that all take some constant amount of time, our base case. Now let's analyze a bit how much work goes into doing this. For every layer of my tree, I have some work in combining the results. So all the way at the top, I need to execute this Fn once. Over here, I need to execute this Fn a times, but only on n over b of the input. So, for instance, for this one, I need to sort two lists, because a equals 2 for our example here, but these two lists are only half the size. This continues all the way to the bottom, where we need to figure out, okay, how many of these things do we have? And all of those take us only f of 1 time. So this is the amount of work that I get when combining the nodes. So combining the sub-results. But that's not the only work I have. I also have work in the leaves. This T1, this constant over here. So the question is also, how many leaves have I got? Oh, sure, we can sum this together, great. And I could have sworn that on my screen I could see the B, but I'll make sure to shift it up so that next time it will also fit on my slide. But it says B to the power I. The total amount of time spent in the leaves, well, every leaf requires a constant amount of work. So the only question is, how many leaves do I have? Well, every time I split into A, so it's A to the power, the height of my tree, which is the log B of N, and applying some logarithmic rewriting rules, I can rewrite that to N to the power, the log B of A.
So we have two bits of work. On the one hand, I have work from combining all of my sub-results. And on the other hand, I have work that happens in the leaves, where the number of leaves determines the number or the amount of work. And the question we must ask is which of the two is more work? Which of the two results in the most work? So then let's take a look at the different cases that we can have. So work in the leaves, work in combining the results. Well, we're going to split that, or we're gonna, we can say that the total amount of work that we've got is just the sum of these two things. So, the total amount of work that we have is the work in the leaves plus all of that work of combining our results. And now in the master method we distinguish three cases. We say, well, either the runtime is dominated by the work in the leaves, so it's this thing that's going to dominate our runtime, or the work is evenly distributed throughout the tree, meaning it's just as much work to do all the things in these leaves as it is to combine all of the results, or it's dominated by the root. Notice that this means that not only is combining the results the most work, but it's actually the last step of combining, the one all the way at the top, that is the most work. The one that happens in the root of our tree. So if we take a quick look at this thing, it's this thing that's going to be the most work. The master method doesn't talk about this anymore. It's hard to compare this thing and this thing. But we have three cases, either the leaves dominate, it's evenly distributed throughout the tree, or the root dominates. In these three cases, we can apply the master method. If it's none of these, and we'll see one example of that as well, then unfortunately we cannot apply the master method and we'll have to go back to repeated unfolding and approve by induction. But if it is one of these three cases, then the master method says, okay, don't worry about it, I got you covered. Now you can just apply the following simple trick. If the work is dominated by the leaves, well then this first term, the number of leaves, is going to dominate the runtime, so that's the runtime. And when is that the case? Well, that's the case when combining the work is strictly less work than the work in the leaves. So if it's bound by n to the power log b of a minus some epsilon. So it's strictly less work than the work in the leaves. Alternatively, the work was evenly spread. So the work in combining the solutions is just as much work as the work in our tree or in our leaves. In that case, well, we need to do both. So we have to include the height of our tree in this expression as well. So we include a log n factor. And finally, the work is dominated by the root of the tree. This means that fn is strictly more work than the work in the leaves. So it's lower bound by the work in the leaves, plus some epsilon, right? Strictly more. In that case, well, it's the work of combining the, solution that's, the solutions that's going to dominate. But in this case, case three, there is this one special requirement. We call it the regularity condition. And the regularity condition says that the work in the root to combine the solutions there must be strictly more work than in the next layer. And recursively, that means that that one must be strictly more work than in the layer next to that, after that, and so on and so forth. 
And it's summarized like this. This A times the little bit less work of combining the next layer of solutions should be strictly less work than the work in the root.